Welcome back. P2P lending or peer-to-peer -peer lending is in Indonesia has recorded such significant expansion in large part because it meets a growing demand for credit in a country where 51% of the population remains unbanked. P2P platforms are attractive across the country because they do not require providers to establish a physical presence in several locations across the vast archipelago country to disperse funds. Nonetheless, a large majority of P2P borrowers currently reside in Jaffa, the most populous and prosperous island in the country. As well as providing personal loans, P2P platforms also fill the gap for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises seeking trade finance and inventory loans and have become a prominent source of agriculture finance for small-scale farmers and other agribusinesses. Although the industry has flourished, it also faces serious challenges on the supply side. The OJK itself has received thousands of uh, complaints, including of intimidation and sexual harassment during debt collection processes, breaches of data privacy, and failure to record loan payments. Although the OJK is actively clamping down on predatory lenders, the scale of the challenge is significant. Up to November 2019, it had been found as much as 1,494 illegal P2P lender to be operating in Indonesia. In this infographic segment, I would like to present to you some data about the dynamic of P2P lending in Indonesia. The first one will be about percentage of loan value through P2P lending in Indonesia. Let's see the uh, first graphic in today's infographic segment. This percentage of loan value through P2P lending in Indonesia, as much as 30.8% uh, um, had been lent in Jakarta area, 27% in West Jaffa, and 10.9% in East Jaffa. P2P lending in Indonesia is set for rapid growth as the uh, operators of such platforms are expected to disperse 30.63 billion US dollar or 430 trillion rupiah in loans by 2024, which represents four times in the amount in 2018. As customers turn to e-commerce as a result of improvements in internet and mobile phone penetration, demand for working capital funding will also increase, effectively fueling the P2P expansion. Then, how about the number of P2P lending business based on their characteristic and status? Let's see the next data. This is the number of P2P lending operators based on their business type and status. Uh, by 2019, the uh, number of conventional P2P lending operators as much as 152, but in Sharia, uh, as much as 12 players only. Home to the largest Muslim population, Indonesia is looking to Sharia compliant financial technology to enhance financial inclusion in the country where access to financing remains limited. OJK or Financial Services Authority records show that only 8.11% of the country's population were versed in the Sharia economy in 2016. Although about 88% of Indonesia's population of some 260 million people is Muslim, Islamic finance is struggling to penetrate the market. OJK data also show that the market share of Islamic financial services stood at 8.47% of the total financial services market as of June 2018, marking a slight increase from 8.24% in December 2017. The return in investing money in P2P lending platforms affecting the number of lender account. Let's see the next data. This is the number of lender account in P2P lending in Jaffa Island in 2016 to 2019. And as you can see, the number of lender account grow significantly from 2016 as much as 12,498 accounts uh, increased to 75,769 accounts and in 2018 155,229 and in 2019 as much as 487,950 accounts already um, registered as the um, you know official uh, lender and P2P uh, lending platforms. There are so many opportunities in the fi 
uh, financial technology industry, especially P2P lending businesses that investors can tap into. This is due to the large young population present in Indonesia with 40% or 40 to 50% of them unbanked high internet and smartphone penetration, the geographical challenges and the lack of credit history have made traditional banks even harder to reach this unbanked population as well as the unbanked SME. So how about the number of borrower account in P2P lending in Indonesia? Let's see the data. So if we try to compare the number of um, lender account versus the borrower account in um, P2P lending platform. So the, so the number is quite um, extreme. As you can see in 2019, the number of borrower account in P2P lending as much as 14 million uh, or 14.3 million uh, accounts. And the clear advantage for the borrower is the low interest rate compared to the interest rate set by authorized financial institutions such as the bank. For example, a P2P loan may have an interest rate uh, that rests between uh, 12 to 20 percent less than the rates of most financial institutions and even most credit card companies. Another plus for the borrower is the uh, simplified process of applying for loans. The P2P process is much faster and easier. In addition, the borrower is not required to meet or subjected to difficult conditions in order for the loan to be approved. And millennials are interested to invest their money in P2P lending platforms. To see the number of millennial investors, we can see the next data. This is the age of lenders in P2P lending up to June 2019. Uh, the um, number of a lender with the age 19 to 24, as much as 69.3%. Meantime, uh, the uh, lender in P2P uh, lending platform uh, from the age of uh, 35 to 54 as much as 27.2%. For millennials, P2P lending investment is certainly familiar. This investment provides maximum benefits both for the investors and the borrower. Although P2P investment in Indonesia has not been as large as in China, the United States or the United Kingdom, its growth rate is expected to continue to increase over time. Considering the easy way and also having a lucrative profit, it's no wonder that P2P lending is considered as suitable investment for young people. Investors in this one investment are more profitable because the interest is greater than the bank interest. Investors will get twice the profit, even three times greater than the capital length. No wonder the number of investors in P2P lending keep on growing. And all the best for P2P lending ecosystem in Indonesia. Stay tuned on Market Alliance because we'll be right back after the break.